that when you're talking about morality, when you're talking about Sharia law and all these kinds of things, you mentioned something quite interesting. You said our ordinary requirements for moral philosophy. You mentioned as well, like you've got deontological ethics, you've got consequentialism or teleological ethics, and then you've got virtue yes, ethics. Yes. You pick up a book on ethics, like for example, John Mackey, you're going to find this kind of classification. This is a Western classification. You mentioned two men, which are Emmanuel Kant and John Rawls, both of which, in a sense, represent the white liberal tradition, both white men from, Westerns, uh, from the Western hemisphere. My question is, why should it be that white men dictate to us what morality is? Have we had enough of this in this country? In in the sense that, you know, this is now, in a, in, in, to be honest with you, in a veiled sense. If you said our requirements for morality, I think we've all subscribed to it. We have a completely different understanding and a completely different ontology. Why have you assumed that the white man is right? What proof that you have that is Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative, or his hypothetical imperative, or John Rawls' veil of ignorance, where you kept mentioning any of that stuff is true? And if it, it, what proof do you have that it's objectively true that, uh, as an atheist? If we can get through this question, then we can talk about Sharia law and the false things that you were saying about it. For example, a woman that's menstruating gets burnt or something like that, or you get burned by it, or if, you're, if you have sex with a woman that's menstruating, which is not mentioned in any book of fiqh in Islam whatsoever. And you mentioned it's mentioned in the books of Fiqh, it's not mentioned in any book whatsoever. Then you mentioned Khomeini who was an obscure figure. So my question is, as an atheist, you, you're, you have the audacity to say our requirements of moral philosophy, as if the white man's moral philosophy is all of our moral philosophies. No, we have divine command theory, we have Quran, we have Sunnah, we have our own way of deriving morals. What objective proof do you two have that the deontological ethics of Immanuel Kant and or the veil of ignorance of John Rawls, who is a liberal, both of them are liberal in a sense, and or any of the consequentialist ethics uh, of any of the utilitarian thinkers of the modern day is objectively true? So first of all, I think you play a very dangerous game when you attach secular ethics to race and you rob people who are of many races of their human rights. Like when you say that it's a white man's game, to talk about rights, no, or to try and abolish suffering. No, I didn't say it's a white man's race, it's a white man's game to talk about rights. I said that what you've mentioned is a Western form of ethics, is the ones who, the knowledge producers were objectively white men, objectively from the liberal tradition in Europe. You'll know about the genetic fallacy. I'm not saying Otherwise, it's false, I'm asking you why it's true. Yes, so let's first, no, let's first want to deal with this question of Jim saying, we can assess the content of the ideas mm. by looking at the race and the sex of the speaker you said our moral philosophy, you've included me in your morality. I'm asking you to prove your morality before you say our morality. I don't subscribe to your morality. Ask, answer me why is the veil of ignorance of John Rawls or the consequentialist moralities of any of the liberal thinkers or the veil of ignorance uh, or the uh, deontological ethics of that? It's true. I'll get to it. You're going to have to stop interrupting yeah. me. Though. Okay. And so, first, to add to you, so it enhances your discourse. You also mentioned rights. Yes. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm assuming you're advocating a liberal conception of rights, like the Universal Declaration of yeah. Human Rights. Well, do you advocate the UN Charter? The, the claim that I've made is that there are three different ways in which an atheist can construct morality. They I understood that. I just yeah. want to know specific, because you mentioned rights twice. Yeah. And it's very so important to the unpack The ontological account can get you rights, and a consequentialist account can also get you rights. Yes, but from the result. perspective of law, of legal and moral reasoning, and what your views are, so I understand how to yeah. deal with you yeah. and your beliefs, in a positive way, what conception of rights do you advocate? Is it is it the conception of rights that is known as the Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights? So first of all, I haven't expressed the personal view about ethics, and I don't intend on doing that. Okay, because you mentioned rights twice. Can you say our old man? Very nice. Just the reason I'm saying is because rights are connected to morality. You've asked him a number of times. Can you just for the sake of discussion? I promise not to interrupt. Five minutes. I just wanted to. Project. I just wanted to add to that because uh, that's going to be a follow-up question. So if you think about that, just let us know. Mm, yeah. Because the, what I wanted to say was that has a liberal individualist assumption, which many people don't have to uh, agree. And that's why when you come to the table with these universals, mm. uh, it does come across in some way that there's a sign of maybe superiority complex. Yes, superiority. And, and I don't mean it in a negative way. I'm just trying to psychoanalyze certain statements in a positive way so we know, and you can stand in the possibility, that in actual fact, that you may think you're already right. And I want you to stand in the possibility that you might be wrong. And if that's the case, then maybe define your terms a bit more clearer, clearer, clearer 
that clearer, mm-hmm. especially when you're mentioning things like rights, because rights is a big term, but it has ideological strong constructs. That's yes. my point. All right, so I'm now going to speak without interruption. Absolutely. And I'm going to try and answer your questions as please, best as I Please, please, please. You're still interrupting me. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. please. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, so let's first of all talk about the different moral frameworks that you can have. I haven't picked a lane for myself, and I don't intend on doing so. The claim that I have made is that an atheist is entitled to claim that there are moral facts, that they don't have to buy the nihilism. You've set up a false dilemma, which is to say that either morality is grounded in God, or there is no such thing as morality, that the atheist is, re- is required to say that they're just whizzing atoms and they can't have any normative force. And what I pointed out is that there are very good secular claims to why there is morality, either grounded in suffering or grounded in human reason which can generate rights. And by the way, those rights can be spoken about either in legal instruments, so we can talk about rights that are allocated by the UN, uh, or they can just be talked about in the deontological sense. You don't necessarily have to think that uh, the UN uh, Charter on Human Rights is the definitive account. Um, But I think we think a lot of the rights that are in the Charter are pretty good. Now, you can bite the bullet. You can just say, I don't buy any of it. I don't believe in rights. I don't think there's a problem with suffering. I don't like any of the rules that that rules generates. And you can just bite the bullet and you can say, there is nothing wrong with putting homosexuals to death. Um, That's just your white, liberal, Western conception of things. And then we're going to have to agree to disagree on that. The point is that you have to bite a very repugnant bullet. That when you deny the major moral theories, that the consensus is going to be against you. Now, it has nothing to do with your race or your sex. While I was trying to explain this, that there's a huge danger in claiming that the liberal tradition or that uh, the moral philosophies that have emanated from John Stuart Mill, John Rawls, or Emmanuel Kant belong to white people, or because they emanate from white people, there's something wrong with them. First of all, many people around the world benefit from the notion of human rights. The idea that as an individual, you have a claim against someone else not to do certain things to you. That because you have a right to dignity, it is wrong for someone to intentionally torture you against your will, to put you into a state of slavery. I mean, one of the examples that I gave where I said any person who thinks that um, morality is external and a good thing would think that slavery is abhorrent. Now, the Quran mentions slavery on many occasions. It does Before not. Before we get to that, you've spoken for two minutes. Can we respond to one thing at a time? Because otherwise you're just going sure, to... Let him finish that. Let me finish that point. Okay, go ahead. Let me go. If the Quran mentions slavery, and we'd expect a divine being that either issues good commands or is aware of what is good, mm-hmm. to not just have regulation about slavery, mm-hmm. but to outright condemn it, to say that no matter the society that you're in, regardless of the place or the time, slavery is always wrong. And we just don't see that in the Quran. Okay, that seems so like a failure. That's responding. You, you've completely miscategorized what he said. You've strawmanned actually what he said, which is very surprising considering your level of qualification and education. I'm actually surprised that he didn't say we don't believe in rights or suffering. He said we don't believe in ob- that you can't prove it objectively. Underline the word objectively. As an atheist, there is no mechanism through which you can prove deontological ethics or consequentialist ethics on an ob- objective framework. Which is why John Stuart Mill tried to prove the uh, desirability principle in his book on utilitarianism. What I'm saying is that this is the first thing you're going to have to choose. The second thing is, you, we talk about race and you talk about slavery. Let me tell you something the Prophet Muhammad said. Yes, okay, the Prophet said there's no virtue over a black man, over a white man, or an Arab over a non-Arab. How comes it took you, I don't know, how many years as uh, the white dominance to figure that out? Only t- uh, 30 years ago you, you, you stopped apartheid. So why should we listen to you, in a sense? Okay, if you're playing the moral superiority card. With all due respect, with all due respect, it took you a thousand f- three hundred years after the fact to realize that something the Prophet said, Prophet Muhammad, who you're attacking the religion of right now, a three, 1,300 years before, you now agree with him. So how do we know you're not going to differ on these issues? Number two, on the issue of slavery, okay, because, it, you know, when was the, when was the part I then? 1994, 30 years ago, and they're telling us about this and that. I mean, I don't see how this is working here. Number two, you said, you said this, uh, the, the, the emanation and the knowledge production of these ideologies that you're talking about is undoubtedly white and European. You cannot take that away from the reality. Uh, I don't think John Stuart Mill or Jeremy Bentham or Emmanuel Kant was Nigerian. 
I didn't know, I didn't see. You're talking about secular ethics. It's not the secular ethics of the black man, is it? It's the secular ethics of the white man. And you've already assumed it to be true. Just like many of probably the people before in this country, white men, assumed that apartheid was true. Then, then they had to, uh, the suffering, by the way, that Mandela and others had to uh, undergo, the suffering that, which is good suffering, by the way, because not all suffering is bad, you said suffering is bad. What about the suffering that Mandela and the others, the anti-apartheid activists had to go through? Was that good suffering or bad suffering? It was good suffering because then people realize that it's, you know, it's equality and race and things like that. So this is what you're doing here is you're being morally sanctimonious. You're clearly trying to come with the hierarchies. You explain to me. No, you explain to me why your morality is true in the first place. I believe, yes, homosexuality is prohibited in Islam. It's wrong. Yes, I believe you're going to go to the hellfire if you don't believe in Allah. Yes, I believe that there's heaven. Yes, I believe in the day of judgment. These are things I believe in. That's, uh, tell me why that's wrong. Tell me why that makes Islam to be true. What creedal disproving implications does that have? As a philosopher, where is your objective morality? Where is your objective reasoning? Where are the arguments? Where is the empiricism? Where is the calculations? Where is the proof? Where is the evidence? That's what I'm asking. Don't assume because do the dominance remains in the Western Hemisphere and there's hegemony on the side of the Western Hemisphere that whatever ideology they decide to put down, we're going to assume it's going to be true that you're going to come here and tell us our requirements for, mo for moral, our moral requirements. That's your moral requirements. I have a different, you have a religion, I have a different religion. Prove to me that your religion is true. That's what I'm saying. Why is consequentialism true? Why is the ontological ethics true? Why don't you come and start with that? So before Mark responds, I just want to make a meta comment about the style of communication that's going on. Which makes me very uncomfortable. Okay. I'm very uncomfortable with how this has very quickly degenerated into a shouting match. I understood, and I was led to believe by the organizers of this event, that we were going to be here to discuss, in a mature and reflective way, various worldviews. I am very disheartened by the turn that this has already taken. So I want that noted for everybody to see. Because, because, I, because I am not as philosophers, as intellectuals. And for the last five minutes, Mark, who is a, he's an absolute gentleman, has been shouted at. Now, this is not, this is not relevant, to be honest with you. Right, We're think, talking about God and morality. You've spoken for about 10 and minutes and about again, Islam is And again, so and again. Can, you get, can you get to the point, please? And again, the point is I'm making a get to the point. I'm making a mess of Yeah, but it's, it's not really, it's not really. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to have a step in. So let, let me just reset. So let's reset things. things. I, okay. want to, so I want to reset things and I want to talk about something. Can I say one thing? I will let you. I promise I'll let you. Um, so we did say that this is a discussion um, and uh, we all came here wanting to discuss things uh, and understand that things are heated. Um, I should say that I enjoyed all four uh, presentations. Uh, I was impressed with the level of philosophy in all three, uh, all four, sorry, I said three, all four presentations, Thank right? Um, and I'd like us um, as best as we can, even though these things are heated for all of us, um, to try to do what we did in the discussion. Yes. Try to argue the point, uh, even if we uh, do not like many things. I don't things want anyone to tell me how to speak, with all due respect. I'm free in this country, I can speak with an assertive voice. I don't need people telling me how to speak. I've not been told that I cannot speak in an assertive voice. A discussion doesn't exclude that. With all due respect, I don't want to be told off. This is a 21 five minute segment. And we're I'm not, not telling you. Yeah, we will, no, he was for, for two minutes. He, that is a, a, a runaway tactic. He knows that he's got nothing to say about this. <laughs> Prophet Muhammad and Salman Rushdie and homosexuality and attacking Islam. I'm telling you, respond to my arguments. Instead of trying to tell me off like a little boy, trust me, I'm not a little boy. In every single man, I'm a bigger man. Than <laughs> Why is it that your is objectively true? Go and answer the question. You have to write it down. So, sorry, sir, we haven't, we haven't settled this yet. So the issue is not being told what to say or how to say it, right? The issue is that there's a... Uh, there's a... Uh, there's a structural apartheid the way you're being, you're being dealt with right now. That's what I'm telling you. I'm speaking the way I want to speak. So I, told me let me, I let me say this. Let me put it this way. I would, right? like to be, I would like to be dealt with properly here. Let me put it this way. Do you know what I'm saying? So just answer my questions. I don't want to be told how to speak. Of all due respect, Listen, I'm, coming. I'm speaking to you in a way. You're just, you're being, you're being a no. sanctimonious and no. you're trying to be the schoolboy teacher. No. You're not here for that. No. 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 I actually... It's why you spent three minutes actually in our conversation. No. My views are closer to yours. I'm not an atheist. Oh, it doesn't matter what you My are. views are closer to yours. <laughs>